Ahoy, landlubbers, it's me, your valiant Captain Vasco, and behold my mastery of the element of fire! Yeah, I don't think I've actually pointed this out, but I've always kind of liked this about Rush, is that you can actually hold down his firewall and sort of just make a shield in front of you for a while. I don't know. I don't particularly think we're going to be doing that today or anything. I just noticed that I hadn't talked about it. How's everybody doing? I'm doing pretty good. I've already collected all the treasure from around the ship in the vault, because the doors closed again after a new level, and just the stuff on the deck and all the boxes and whatnot. I uh, figured I'd save us a step, and we could jump right into the upgrades. That's why we're already here, and... Persephone's cabin. Um, so we're gonna start here with Rush because he didn't have a chance to upgrade last time. He's got some gold. Uh, I, I picked up basically the entire vault's worth of treasure for him because I noticed that he's actually like the furthest behind in terms of upgrades. So let's fix that real quick. Uh, again, here is the, the firewall. I guess it's reasonable for me to have been showing it off since we're gonna be upgrading it. No big surprise since we're on the firewall upgrade path. Um, yeah, you know, it kind of just looks like fire in a sort of pointy triangular pattern. Uh, so what wonders will we be met with when we upgrade? Well, if we believe in the power of advertising, then our firewall will be bigger and do even more increased damage. They really like to use that phrase, even more increased damage. You'll see it on probably the majority of all Skylanders upgrade pads. Uh, we do have enough gold to pick up the Ding Dong Ditch upgrade, but it's not nearly as useful as this. Plus, uh, Rush is one of those weird uh, Skylander exceptions in that uh, even though we've already bought all of his basic upgrades and we've chosen an upgrade path, we can't actually see all the upgrades on it. You have to upgrade them in order. Now, I'm not entirely sure why that is. If anyone could fill me in on that, that would be great. Uh, but all I know is to get the final firewall upgrade, we're going to have to get this one first. And since that's truly amazing, we're going to make haste and pick that up. All right, let's see what this puppy can do. <laughs> see what I did there? Yeah, I'm clever. Alright, uh, the fire definitely looks like a little bit bigger, maybe like wider as well. Uh, again, without uh, enemies on the Dread Yacht to sort of show off on, we're gonna have to take their word on it for the damage. But looking at this, it looks pretty devastating, so I would not be surprised to learn that it does in fact deal more damage. Alright, now let's look into our friend Yoshi. Now you may remember that last time we uh, increased the size of these melons so that they would do a massive amount of damage and be much more difficult to dodge. Now, we're looking to get an upgrade for the melons yet again, but this one's a little bit unusual. Let's check it out. Finally going to pick up Melon Fortress, the thing I keep wanting to call the basic melon attack, which is called Melon Fountain. But for some reason, Melon Fortress is the thing that sticks in my head. Whatever, we know I'm bad at names. What you might not know is that this will allow us to sort of hide underground while our melons sort of do their thing. Like I said, it's a little bit out of the ordinary, but let's take a look at it. It can be useful. Alright, now I wasn't pointing it out before, but uh, when I was using the Melon Fountain a moment ago to show it off, I was actually holding down the Attack 3 button. Uh, what we've done now with this upgrade is to make it so that when we hold down Attack 3, we can sort of hold the fortress in place. Now, this is interesting in a couple of ways. Um, for one, it I mean, it, it does have a limited duration to it, but you can use it as like a defensive barrier, which is kind of cool. But also you can sort of just like do a delayed timer. So if I just hold it down, you know, I don't want to fire it right away because maybe the enemy's not in range yet, but then I let go and then they fire off. Um, also, if you just hold it, then you can sort of... I thought I... Hmm. I thought you could just kick them out of the way. What causes that? There's some way to do it. I'm not smart enough to remember. Anyway, it gives you a lot of flexibility with your melon fountain attack, and it's definitely got some uses, although a lot of the time you're probably just going to fire it off like normal. It's still good to keep in mind that you can do it, and like I said, has its uses. Alright, now Flint's upgrade today is actually kind of interesting in the fact that, well I mentioned with uh, Rush's upgrade that you're sort of meant to buy them in a certain order, and I think that's true of Flint as well, but because one of them is the soul gem and you can buy that as soon as you collect the soul gem, I've sort of gone out of order. Anyway, we have picked up in the past the ability to split into boulders and roll ourselves around, and that's pretty cool. But, since we're trying to get all the upgrades for all of our characters, let's see what we can still do. Yes, the upgrade we're getting today is called the Controlled Rock Slide. And uh, it lets you control the direction of your rock slide attack, which is a little bit redundant since the Soul Gem sort of lets us completely control our movement during the entire rock slide attack. Uh, as I recall, what this actually does if you buy it before the Soul Gem, uh, is that it allows you to sort of like 
press one direction and uh, have all of your boulders go in that way, so you can sort of use it as a dodge in that respect. Um, but again, having the soul gem sort of makes it redundant because the soul gem gives you more flexibility. But anyway, I'm gonna buy it because I want to complete all of the upgrades. Alright, let's go ahead and check out this move real quick, just to make sure I'm not forgetting any particular utility or anything silly like that. So, if we try and launch our rock slide and hold left, for example... And let's try right. Yeah, okay. It seems like, uh, even if you already have the ability to sort of control your movement during the rock slide attack, that having the controlled rock slide upgrade allows you to sort of, like, thrust your rock slide and sort of give yourself some instant momentum. Which is good for dodging, like I already said, or maybe closing the gap on an enemy nearby that you're trying to take out. Pretty useful, and I think it's still worth getting the upgrade even if you've already gotten the soul gem, like I went way out of my way to do. Um, this will make a nice addition to Flint's arsenal. Have to say, we're starting to run low on upgrades for some of these characters, which can only mean one thing, getting close to the end of the game. But we're not out of the water just yet. In fact, our resident Water Skylander is actually eligible for a new upgrade. So let's, uh, belly slide on over to Persephone and see what she's got in store for us. Well, we could upgrade the Bermuda Triangle, and, uh, while I haven't completely written off the Whirlpool Ripper combo, I've had a lot of difficulty using it. Not exactly my favorite. Not that I dislike this upgrade path, making the melee attacks stronger is pretty good. Um, I just don't particularly love the combo attack. It's not that easy to pull off, not that easy to use, especially in the main game. I know this path is preferred for people doing PvP or like player versus player friend battles with Skylanders, but that's not something I really need. Instead, I think I'll go for the Soul Gem ability, Blowhard, which I've used in the past and have had a lot of good successes with. Hmm, you know, come to think of it, Persephone's cabin is a little bit small to be showing off a move this large for one of our giants. Perhaps we should step outside in order to take a better look at the upgrade we just got. Alright, so I showed you the belly slide just a moment ago, and it didn't really have much of an attack to it other than being able to sort of damage any enemies that got in the way while you were trying to use it. And that wasn't bad or anything, but now we have some extra oomph. If we use our attack one button while sliding, then we can fire a blast of water out of our blowhole, as a giant whale, and uh, sort of shoot some starfish all over the place. Starfish do a fair amount of damage, and while it's not super accurate because you can't really control where they fire, they just sort of go off in random directions, it's still sort of nice to have this attack, because it means that even if you're trying to retreat from an enemy, which is probably the main thing I end up using the belly slide for in a fight, uh, it still means you're able to attack your enemy, which is super cool. But uh, with that, I think we've covered all blah, blah, blah. we've covered all of our upgrades for today. So why don't we switch to someone who's gonna be very important to our quest early on? Our friend Pegasus, and then we can head up, talk to Flynn, and get on our way with this quest. All right, Flynn, you promised us a helicopter ride. You better make good on it. So here's the plan. We're gonna fly in style in that sweet copter, and Ermit is gonna follow us in the ship. You ready for this? Hmm. I'm a little bit hesitant to leave the ship in the care of Ermit the Hermit, but gotta do what you gotta do. Chaos must be stopped. He has to pay for what he did to our friend the Machine Ghost, and we're getting close to him. If this mission's a success, we could very well find ourselves in the lost city of Arcus. Whoa! Yeah! I am so pumped to fly that copter! I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be awesome at it, too. You have done well, Portal Master. Oh, but thanks, Chaos yeah. is on the verge of awakening an ancient power that was never meant to be found. Behold! At last! The Iron Fist of Arcus! And it's all mine! Now, finally, I, Chaos, will be the supreme ruler of all Skylands! <laughs> oh, this looks bad. Oh. It also looks like that glove's a little too big. Maybe we're all right after all. What's wrong with this thing? Do you stupid robot hand! Give me my power! Wait. Wait, what's happening now? 
I don't think I like this. No, this gives new meaning to one size fits all. And fits like a glove, for that matter. Yes! Fear it! Fear my giant robot head! <laughs> okay, well, this is worse than expected. We better get a move on. Oh, yeah. I love flying this thing. You know, if we don't find this Arcus place, maybe we could just cruise around for a while. Do I need to remind you that we're on a very important mission? Aha! Ahoy! Well, there it is. Just like that strange Oracle fella said it would be, right? Wow! This place is enormous! And it's huge! Hang on, we're going in! Well, all right, Callie, this could be it. The Skylander and I are going right into the heart of the lost city of Arcus. I guess what I'm saying is, if I don't come back. Uh, Flynn, I'm following you in the ship, remember? Attention, Archean robot minions. It is I, your new leader, Emperor Chaos. Rise! Yes, rise! And bear witness to the dawn of my glorious reign! Okay, that's not good. Better hurry. It's only a matter of time before the Archeans realize you aren't one of them and their defenses kick in. Rightio. Well, this won't be a problem for the greatest pilot in all of Skylands. <gasps> Don't say it! Just hurry. I'll meet you on the other side. What are you talking about, Kelly? We totally blend in with everyone else. Everyone else is a, a giant cyclops suit of armor thing, right? That's... no, that's just me? Weird. Alright, so, welcome to the Autogyro Adventure. This is probably cited as uh, people's favorite uh, level in this game second after the Oracle, at least from the sense I have. I think it's a pretty cool level, but it's not my favorite. I'm sure I'll be talking more about that. But for now, let's get going. Alright, so, uh, it's kind of similar to the, uh, the walking robot level in the last game, except that, uh, inverted controls, which is good. Uh, the game defaults you to not inverted controls, which, uh, if that means anything to you, you probably know that that's a little bit weird. Uh, most, like, flying simulator type things sort of have it so when you hold down you go up, because that's how, like, actual airplane and helicopter joysticks work. Whoa, we better pull this thing into hover mode here. Alright, so uh, there's there's two modes for the Archean Copter, which Flynn mentions. Uh, let me talk it over him a little bit. It's not one of those levels where there's just sort of like constant dialogue, so it's kind of hard not to be talking over the game. Uh, there's two modes. There's jet mode and hover mode. Hover mode is kind of like a puzzle solving action shootery type mode that happens when we reach certain obstacles. And jet mode is us getting from place to place. Uh, now, those little purple blippy doos that I just picked up, they're boosts. Uh, they look kind of like the magic symbol. Uh, magic element Skylander symbol, I mean. And we gotta shoot at him. So yeah, in hover mode you get to shoot. In jet mode you can use those boosts to uh, fly quickly. And if you, uh, I think they call it chaining boosts, where you hold down the boost button from one boost and hit the next one and you uh, you like maintain speed uh, through both boosts then that gives you like a, a bonus like multiplier to the treasure that you pick up uh, similar to those robot sections both in this game and in the last game you pick up treasure for like you know either pi actually picking up treasure or like certain maneuvers that you now do let's just set her down gently and all right, there we go. As mentioned, we've picked up some treasure. It's sort of you, you pick it up after various sections. And I'll guard the copter. So yeah, one of the big things about this level is that you'll sort of like uh, fly around, and then you'll reach an obstacle. Like here, uh, we don't have like those same things on the door that we can just shoot at to unlock it. So in order to get past this. Uh, they're going to introduce us to this weird gizmo thing, where you pick up the, I don't know, like, kind of springy bit, and then you put it in one of these, like, suit of armor looking things. 
and then opens the door. Let's fly. All right. Um, now, one of the things I don't love about this level is that it sort of splits up the action in the helicopter and on foot in like a really kind of frustrating way. Um, so like, there's a lot of like optional places to land that have really short sections to them. And it just sort of like breaks up the flow of the level really bad. We're gonna check this out in just a minute because the first optional landing place is uh, just up ahead. Whenever you see one of these blue arrows on a platform, if you move close to it, then you can land on it. Uh, something else I don't love about this level is there's a couple platforms that look like landing platforms and don't have the arrow on them. And if you try to land on them, you'll just like run into a wall. And that's no fun. Alright, so the reason we decided to start with Pegasus today is that very quickly in the level, we encounter an undead uh, gate area. I should warn you that those who enter this undead location never come out. All but one legendary explorer, that is. He lost his famous hat inside, but did not return to retrieve it. Oh, See, I didn't even instigate this conversation. They're just going to tell you about the hat no matter what. They really like telling you about hats in these gates. Alright. Um, yeah, one other thing I'd like to point out about this level is that it has awesome music. I think it's the best uh, music track in like either uh, Sparrow's Adventure or Giants, in my opinion. Uh, I haven't played Swap Force yet. I think it's technically out now, but I'm waiting to get it on the PS4, because I'm excited about the PS4. So I haven't played that just yet. You guys will know when I've played it. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. Looking forward to that. Okay, so you encounter this really dopey block puzzle, and you just sort of push everything out of your way. You don't have to do anything in particular. But one of those blocks you can push off the edge, and if you do so and then step onto it, it gets you into this cave, where we will find the treasure chest. The first of four, of course. So always the same number. If you haven't picked up on that by now, you probably haven't watched that many of these episodes. Or you haven't played the game. Either way. Alright. So, actually, Pegasus is one of our higher level Skylanders, so we probably won't be playing with him too much longer. But uh, there's a particular reason I don't want to switch just yet, and I'm sure you'll see why in just a minute. Um, yeah, this is... there's like one other elemental gate in this uh, level, and it's not nearly as big as this. This is like our biggest section in that respect. Uh -oh. mice and dice. Yep, we're getting ambushed, you guys. So now might be a good time to switch. Make sure they're both on screen. And then we're gonna switch to my buddy Falco. It's a little bit low on experience compared to some. Also, the light core effect will help us out. These guys are real jerks. Uh, these are like evil minion versions of the character Chop Chop. I don't know if you're familiar with him. He is, in fact, uh, an Archean character, at least according to his bios on the wiki. Which, yeah, I actually read some of that stuff. Um, but yeah, it makes sense for him to be an enemy here, so I think that's actually really clever. Um, however, I find that the evil minion version of them, like all evil Skylander minion versions actually, are much more intimidating than their counterparts most of the time. So here, I think it's it's pretty well recommended to have a ranged attack because their swords have like a huge attack range and they can sort of attack suddenly. Like their walking speed is slow, but then they have that spinning dash they just did, and that can sort of come at you from nowhere. So that could be pretty tricky. So you'll want to try and keep a distance if at all possible. Oh, what do we get here? Some sort of accolade? Oh, just monster measure. That's just kind of funny timing, I guess. It's gonna shoot you. There we go. Terrific. So glad we upgraded our blaster. It's coming quite useful, handy, some I words good. Shut up. Uh, I also wanted to switch to Falco, not just because he needed experience, which he gained a ton of just now, uh, but because he's actually been wearing this like underpants hat for like a million years, and as the weapons master hologram pointed out to us, there's a hat here, so we might as well change up the hats. And what do we got here? Oh, it's like a Tesla coil on a baseball hat. Yeah, I'd wear that. That seems pretty cool. It's the future hat. It gives us plus 10 to speed. Maybe not the best boost for our Air Skylander. He's pretty quick, but whatever. He, need his, he needs a new look. Fantastic look for me. So let's step in this transporter. All right, and now that we're back at Star, we can just sort of head back to the uh, auto gyro. I don't know why they call it that. I mean, they sort of also call it a helicopter, but they, they like the weird 
our key and name. So, uh, I, I think one of the biggest tricks to getting all the collectibles in this level is to know where to look for these landing platforms, because as I said, there's some, like, fake ones, and they're really obnoxious. Um, like, if, if you try to land in those, like, not only does it not work, but you usually just end up, like, ramming into a wall, and they look almost identical, so it's really frustrating. Um, so, like, the, the path to look for, I've noticed, is, uh, right, right, left, uh, right, left, left. So we started with right, next one will be on the right. Uh, the next one will be across from a giant robot, one of those, like, Archean Punchatron guys. Um, I'll point it out, we'll get there, no worries. Um... You don't have to collect all the speed boosts. I like to do it. There's a point later in the level where it's useful to you. There we go. That one's kind of tricky. The camera sort of wants you to be further left, so just make sure, again, like, it, I, I was sure to try and point out to you um, where the where the next platform would be so you could just try and just aim for it. So just, like, stay on the correct side. In this case, the right side is right. Um, I don't know. It's... it's it's fairly civil, but it can be really annoying. Okay, oh good, so we've got these guys. Uh, if you join me for my arena bonuses, you'll know how much I dislike these guys. I did learn something actually quite interesting about them, though, uh, when, like, researching this level. Oh, please don't sword me. Is that apparently when they turn gold, they only abs well, they allegedly absorb one hit. Uh, I still maintain that that's not entirely accurate. Um, I don't know. I had had a number of experiences, especially in this level, but I think they also do similar things in the next, well, in the remaining levels of the game. They continue to be enemies. Slight spoiler alert, I guess, in some weird sense. Um, ah, oh, jeez. Their jump attack is so unnecessarily strong, especially when they keep putting you on these stupid tiny platforms where he won't attack you until you're in a position where you're actually going to get hit by him. Um, so as you might imagine, I've talked... Oh, I hate them so much. In the past, I've talked about how I hate the claustrophobic level design of this game. This level is a huge offender, in my opinion. It's a really nasty culprit. There's a lot of, like, really heavy-duty enemies, and most of the layout of this level is, like, small platforms like this. And it's not all that uncommon to come across, like... Like... Four of those Archean duelist guys with the giant swords just all chilling. Like, it's so frustrating to me. I really... If there, if there's one thing I absolutely hate about this level, it's that. It's one of the worst offenders in the game in terms of that. Also, like, I don't love that they keep breaking up the helicopter bits. Like, you know, I sort of talked about how weird it was in the last game when you would pilot the robot. I forget the name of the level. But the, the first time you get to pilot one of these giant Archean robots... And you sort of, you have like a giant section of robot, and then it just sort of turns into a normal level at the end. I definitely prefer that to just sort of going back and forth and like breaking up the fun of the level. Uh, right away, off to the left, we have another optional landing platform. So be on the lookout for that. This one isn't as difficult to notice because you can sort of see the... Uh, the blue arrow from a distance and that sort of clues you into it, which is nice. Um, and the camera's not quite so disagreeable as it is for the second landing platform there. But here's our third optional landing place of six. Um, again, just be on the lookout for them. Uh, so we've done right, right, left. The next one will be right again. Um, so keep that in mind if you're playing along somehow or other. Ooh, another hat. Uh, I can't think of anyone... Actually, I can't think of someone off the top of my head who's had their hat for a while. How about we switch out Rush's hat real quick before carrying on with the level? Probably not going to be seeing a lot of Rush in combat today because he's like way, way over leveled by comparison to most of my team at this point. And even though I'm not trying as hard as the last game to keep everyone even, I also don't want him running away and just being like the powerhouse of the team. Because, I mean, he kind of does that without any help. Anyway, we got a bottle cap hat. Let's put that on. See how that looks. It actually looks really weird. Well, whatever. Okay, now let's uh, switch back to the boon. He'll pick up some of his uh, treasure in these weird pillory things. Um, but yeah, like, I don't... I don't actually hate this level. But, like, I don't like it as much as most people. Like, I like the idea, 
but they, they made some weird decisions I don't love, is really what it comes down to. I don't like the claustrophobic platforms, I don't like the fact that every time you get going with the helicopter and the music jazzes you up, if you're trying to get all the collectibles, you land again, and it, it switches to normal music, and it's not that exciting, and it's just, I, I, it ruins the fun for me, honestly. Um, but, uh, yeah. Just listen to this music track for a sec, it's really great. Yeah, isn't that sweet? I don't know. I mean, I could try and stay silent all day so you could hear the whole thing, but at some point we gotta, gotta do this. I'm gonna pick up some bonus missiles here. The the idea here is that you're supposed to like This guy's not gonna come out from behind the shield like he did last time But this little turret's gonna pop up and try to shoot you and every time you kill it He gives you two missiles. These missiles will be useful later They'll keep us from having to like wait around a really long time for more missiles to show up This is also probably the most generous platform in terms of giving you the missiles and uh, again, you can't actually use the missiles during like the jet mode, only the hover mode, but they still carry over, so it's it's good to know that they're there. Alright, so this time all Flynn was saying just there is that uh, last time our, our combination lock bits were all on the platform where we landed. This time we have to go in a little cave. And uh, we're gonna get some formal introductions to enemies. That we've already encountered in some of the optional areas of the level. Can't actually skip this weird little cutscene where he comes in and kills all the trug pinchers they just introduced to us. Which I think is kind of weird. Let's use our whirlpool. Nope, that did not help. Okay. Yeah, I really hate these duelist guys. I mean, for one, uh, like I was starting to say before, I've had a lot of encounters with these guys where, like, they were in their gold mode, which is only apparently supposed to absorb one hit. And it t they take more than one. Now, I think part of that is that, you know that weird little yellow shield icon I've sort of talked about a little bit in the past that, like, indicates that you just randomly block a hit? I think being in the yellow mode makes it more likely for them to do that, but it still doesn't really justify the ridiculous nature of how, like, invincible they sometimes appear to be when in yellow mode. Um, basically, if you just keep attacking them, you're always going to be fine, but if you're a melee Skylander or you let them get too close, that could be really damaging. So it's, uh, you know, you, you just gotta be careful. Alright, so you have to turn this lever like a zillion times, and then it will, like, levitate this platform over to us, and if you step in the way of the laser, it stops the thing from coming over to you. Kind of annoying, but it makes sense, because the laser's the thing that's bringing it over. However, that works. I'm not up to date on Archean technology. My destiny as your unequaled ruler. I have already received a richly deserved robotic upgrade. Ooh, shiny. Yeah, uh, we've already seen his robotic upgrade, but uh, we have yet to see it in action. And I kind of wish we didn't have to, but you know, we're going to we're going to take him down and that means seeing what his new powers are capable of. Now, uh, this is actually vaguely hidden, uh, where those Trog Pincher guys just came from. Head left, and there's an optional Skystones game, which I will be playing. Welcome, Skylander. I did not expect to see you in the secret tunnels leading to the secret entrance to our secret city. But since you are here, let us play. It's not a very well-kept secret. I mean, the Oracle knew all about it. Wonderful. Though I am not capable of sounding truly excited, I can only assure you that I am. a fairly tricky game. Um, I've mentioned in the past how it's very rare for the elemental spots on a Skystone's grid to come up, like, after you play the guy who can first give you that element of stone. Well, this is, I think, maybe the single exception. There may be one other one I'm not thinking of. Um, but the trick there is to know which stones he has and, like, which ones he's used. And I think he has two of fire and two of earth. So if he uses one of those and, like, the there's other elements spaces open, like, use uh, use your stones to fill those. Um, 
or rather the other way around so like if he ha if you know he's got like an extra fire one and the fire space is still open like place one of your like broken stones there so that he has to place one of his off element stones in the wrong place and then you sort of break even because both of you waste a sky stone it's kind of tricky but i think after a couple tries if you've gotten like the same amount of sky stones i've had you'll probably be able to get this one well played skylander i suppose it is no secret that you are quite good at this game I'm not sure you know what a secret is, because that's not, that's a secret to nobody, as far as I'm concerned. Alright, so the reason we actually came over here is because this is also where our weird suit of armor is. And we're gonna drop our little gizmo in it. Whatever you did in there worked. Nice going. Uh, one thing that's important to note for this level in general, if you're gonna be hitting up all the optional places, is that you're going to encounter a lot of... Like, uh, let's use our new technique. Dive. Oh, that's not the way I meant to dive. Let's just throw this bomb. Boom. Okay, let's try it again. There we go. Blasted him with water. Took him out. Um, so, like, there's going to be a lot of places where you're going to, like, uh, solve a puzzle and then, like, scroll the screen and then, like, a place that you've already passed has a bunch of enemies in it. So, basically, always expect an ambush. Otherwise, you may be unpleasantly surprised. Again, there's a lot of talking going on in this level, but I'm going to do my best to sort of show off everything, which means I'm going to have to be doing some talking over it. Alright, so again, we've done right, right, left, meaning that next will be off to the right. Although I think this one's a little bit of a pause before the next one. Whoop. Uh, one thing also is like a general note for this level is it's often a good idea to sort of follow a trail of treasure when you're doing the jet mode uh, Because like it I don't think there's ever a point where following the treasure actually like leads you astray and like just will Directly lead you into like an obstacle or something like there's sometimes it'll be like a tight squeeze But like if you know what you're doing you'll still get past it All right, so now we don't have to like wait around for these helicopters to happen because we've already collected some missiles. And I'm gonna blow them up so they don't run into me and in the hopes of picking up some more missiles, because that is a possibility. These guys carry the missiles, which is the point, but I find that that one always takes a really long time, which is why I like to stockpile some missiles ahead of time. All right, here's a score multiplier, and we're gonna try and dodge that guy. All right, so there's a fake platform to the left, but we're looking for something on the right. In fact, right here. See what I did there? Because the right and the left. Speaking of, I hope you enjoyed the right and or left paths of the Oracle level. It took me a while to do, but I think it came out cool. Hope you had fun with it. Got another secret cave. This one's actually pretty straightforward. It's just a, a treasure chest and Alric's shop. That's why this is called the uh, Alric's secret lair or cave or something. I forget exactly what it is, but this room is actually named after the fact that Alric is hiding in here. All right, Laboon's gonna pick up some treasure. He has very little at the moment. Yeah, look at that. It's nice. It's very nice. Let's see what Auric's got in his shop, huh? Good to see you again, Skylander. Figured I would take refuge in here. Care to do a little shopping? Uh, yeah, let's check it out. Ah, the Robot Repellent Charm. Here's another one of the charms that you can occasionally buy from him. Uh, this one increases damage you do to robotic enemies. This is mostly things that are named Archean something or other. I believe this also applies to, like, the Chompatron 9000 and the Troll Pants Mark II, whatever that's actually called. Uh, we also have for sale a very impressive Skystone. Um, we've seen some that cost more than this that are way less effective than this. Now, I think the reason behind that is that they're better early on. So, like, in the earlier Skystones games, if you're just playing through the story... They're maybe worth some more gold to you, but like this one's actually a good value. Three blades on all four sides. It really doesn't get much better than that. Um, and then we have like regeneration and fairy dust and a hat. You know, fairly typical stuff other than that, but it's good to know that those are there. Uh, maybe it's. Well, I'll play with Laboon a little bit longer, but we should probably switch characters soon. Um, one thing that this level brings to mind for me is the fact that I'm really glad that this game does not bring back the undead spell punks. I think I mentioned it in the past, but the only spell punks that appear in this game are the life ones, which I think is kind of interesting. Alright, so now that we've gone right, uh, we'll need to look left for our next secret platform. Um, 
and really just knowing the direction is enough to sort of keep it straight, at least for me. Um, you can try and sort of map out exactly where in the level they happen, but I find that to be a lot more confusing than just being like, I'm gonna stay on the left side and do that. Um, yeah, I think, again, we've got a fair stretch before our next secret platform. Now I can use my boost to chain through these and get some treasure. Extra treasure, rather. Alright, here's our next, like, mandatory stopping point. We've still got some missiles left over so we don't have to wait for these turrets. Again, I think that's just a really useful tactic. Especially if you're trying to, like, speedrun this for the, uh, the completion, uh, like, time limit factor. Uh, I always forget the name of all these challenges. Another perfect landing. Okay, you know the drill. Find a crazy key thingy, and then stick it in a weird panel thing. Yeah, if you like, uh, if you like Flid's style of dialogue, you'll probably like this level for that, because he's got a lot of stuff talking about how awesome he is at piloting, and how he really doesn't understand Archean technology, and that's a lot of fun. Like, there's a lot of good things about this level. I hate these small platforms, though. Look. Oh good, like a heavily armored, like, war machine. That's, like, good in close range or ranged attacks. Like, look how difficult this is to dodge. And then, like, he almost instantly gets back up, and then he punches, and that has, like, a big shockwave to it. I really, really just disapprove of this strategy. We do have some bomb guys here, and that's, like, explicitly meant to help you clear out the big guy, but, like, I would really just prefer it if we would have, like, a reasonable playing field so that I could actually have fun fighting the enemies instead of having to work around how frustrating it is. And that's the bottom line with these claustrophobic areas. Like, they're not, like, broken, they're not impossible, you can fight them, but it's just way less fun to do it with that kind of constriction. And I'm really hoping Swap Force doesn't do that as much, because I, I think one of the reasons they did it in Giants is to make the Giants feel big in these small areas, but, I don't know, I, again, I think that's kind of lame. I would rather them just feel awesome. There we go. Can sort of you can sort of attack at least one of the duelists. I think it starts with two in this section, and you can sort of uh, fight at least one of them while they're kind of off screen. Here's our little armor plate thing. It's kind of tucked away, off the beaten path a bit. But uh, the reason we have to come over here is we already saw the screw gizmo thing that we put inside of it, and we can't reach it without a laser. Um, yeah, I think it's about time to switch characters. Who might be good for what's coming up next? I'm gonna try Yoshi. He might be able to handle this well. Spoiler alert, we're gonna get ambushed again. I think maybe twice in here? At least one of these places you get ambushed like repeatedly, and I think it's this one. Alright, so we got another lever here, and we can use it to turn the laser over to this thing. I pushed that laser block before because I think it's easier to sort of do that while you're over there the first time. Um, and now... When we head back over here, oh, it's a monster gate and another one of these jerks. And I think two duelists again, just two more duelists. That's super cool. Sort of, uh, yeah. Let's uh, let's use some melon tactics. If you time uh, the going underground correctly, you can use that to dodge attacks. But as I think I've mentioned, that can be fairly difficult to do. I've been cheap shotted like six times already, just because of how stupidly small this platform is. And again, that's what I really hate about this level more than anything else. There's some other things that bug me about it, but man, does that get my goat! I just hate that about this level. It's just like non-stop giant enemies on tiny platforms. Like, there's just very little actual level to this level, and their attempts to sort of make it seem like there are are really frustrating because they're this, they're these small platforms with the big enemies and they're just no fun at all. Um, so we have to keep the laser there so this platform will stay where we can reach it. I believe there will be at least one more ambush. I think it's on the way out though. I don't think it happens on that same platform, a third set of enemies. Let's pick this up. Eh, it's me again, your ruler. Before you rise up and march across the face of Skylands, crushing all who stand in my way, I have a few decrees. Okay, what, what you got, Chaos? What, what do you need? It's weird that he says that and then disappears. I'm starting to get a crazy feeling you might actually pull this off. But as we're leaving, he'll finish his thought. Trust me. Oh, is this the one with the crystal golem? Ahem. From now on, all trees will be considered enemies of the state. I, Robo Chaos, will now put an end to your leafy conspiracy once okay. and for all. I don't know if you saw that, 
but one of the nice things about all of the lasers that exist here is that the lasers will for some reason do massive amounts of damage to enemies and not harm you in the same way. Oh, no, am I stuck? Oh, that was weird. He, like, got ready to do his ranged attack and then switched to punching. I'm not sure I've ever seen them do that before. Um, but if you were paying close attention, you may have noticed that two Archean duelists just tried to charge me and then just killed themselves on that laser, which was kind of spectacular. I'm kind of glad we got that on film. That was a lot of fun. Tremble, trees! Tremble like you've never trembled before! Ha! Now, this is a situation where if you're, again, if you're uh, speedrunning, because this is one of the mandatory ones... Uh, you can ignore the enemies that appear on your way out, uh, because a as the cutscene shows, the gate opens, so you can just sort of walk past them and, and keep going. So that's a good thing to know if you're, again, trying to speedrun this level, because it can be fairly difficult. Now, again, we've got a real quick left. Uh, that's our next secret platform, so you, you might want to keep that in mind when you finish the room called the Caverns. You've got another section, like, immediately off to the left. You really gotta be ready for these, which is again why I think it's better to just sort of like keep in mind the direction where you'll find these things, because then it doesn't matter how quickly it comes up, you'll just be ready for it. Uh, but again, you can try and like memorize the layout of the level, it's just like, there's just so many like similar looking areas that I find that to be more confusing myself. Um, this room's pretty simple, it's just got some collectibles in it, no enemies or anything. It's the story scroll, which we will read. Well, actually, Eon will read it for us, because apparently all Skylanders are illiterate. It's actually a good question. Have we ever seen a Skylander read anything? Anyway, this one's called Willikin Neighbors, so it's bound to be fun, if not slightly creepy and unsettling. Years ago, a group of cave dwellers used to live among the Willikin until they mysteriously disappeared one day. It was discovered that there were a great many secret entrances to their caverns that were later covered up with large boulders, appearing as though someone was trying to keep something from entering the caves. Or exiting. Alright, I'm pretty sure this is, well, this is obviously referring to uh, the Willikin Village level, but there's that bit where you encounter, like, a, a bark demon, like, on top of a hill with some chompies, and, like, there's a boulder that, like, leads to a cave entrance where there's a chest. I'm pretty sure that's what this one's talking about. Anyway, we've already done that, so we don't need to dwell on it. Even though Yoshi's taking a little bit of a pounding this episode, he's also, uh, almost at the next level. So we're gonna play with him for a little while and see if we can't level him up to heal him a bit. Uh, the fun little unintentional fact, I accidentally hit the, uh... Attack 3 button, and that did not stop me from opening the chest, but it did launch a bunch of watermelons. Um, so that's weird and fun, I guess. Alright, so that was the first of the two lefts that we'll be looking for. Uh, but the next one, I believe, will be coming up shortly, so again, we'll just want to keep an eye on that. I feel like this level has, like, two ways to play it. One for completion, and one for fun. Because while I normally think that getting all the collectibles while playing is, like, just as fun as just trying to run through the level, if not more so, in my opinion. In this case, it's really not. This level is just not designed to have fun while getting the collectibles. It feels, like, really slow and, and tedious. So, like, if you're playing this level to, like, grind your characters, look, here's our next platform already. Like I said, coming up very quickly. Um, but, like, if you're just trying to, like, level up Skylanders or collect treasure, this is actually a pretty good level to collect treasure from. Like, a lot of the random things that drop treasure will just drop things worth like 70 and like that's pretty good for like a random piece of treasure can't complain about that uh, anyway this cave contains the soul gem for the level and this one is of some importance to me considering the fact that it is a member of our team it is Jedvac or Falco as you may better know him and uh, this upgrade as I recall is uh, an armor upgrade I think it may increase his speed with the jetpack or it may boost the jetpack in some minor way, but I think it's mostly an armor upgrade? I may be remembering that wrong. I have played with it before, but, I mean, the main reason to get it is that it makes him look super cool. He looks like some sort of, like, futuristic jetpack guy instead of just some sort of random bird who can't fly. I don't know. Um, so, now that we've done uh, right, right, left, right, left, left, you may have noticed that we've gotten all of our secret platforms. And thus, the only thing remaining to us yeah, is to hit all the... Wow, I did a really good job of piloting just there. Fantastic. Alright. 
So one interesting thing about the rockets is that if you have multiple and you position yourself in just the right way, you can fire multiple at the same time. Um, so like if there's two shields or sometimes even three shields, if you position yourself just right, you can clear them all with just like one launch of missiles. If you said yes, you are correct, my friend. And he is he is really fond of flying that helicopter. Yeah, I do enjoy like you you get a really good sense of his character. I mean, not that you don't in the other levels. It's just this is such a Flynn level that if you like him, you will probably at least find some fun here, even if you're going for the collectibles, which is a little bit less fun. All right, here's a really interesting room. Oh, right, I forgot about that. Um, I have been warned explicitly um, that in this level, the the trogs will, the the trog pincher guys. They will, like, ambush you while that cutscene's going on. However, if you skip it by pressing the action button, then uh, they they will not fully get the drop on you. So that's important to note. But, like, that was very nearly a situation where my Skylander was defeated by a cutscene, and that just drives me bonkers. I hate that. Uh, you may have seen in the last game when that happened to me, and I was none too happy with it. Uh, but, despite the fact that this laser starts pointing very close to uh, where it needs to be, you'll want to press it. I think it's like takes seven pulls to get it to face this way, but that's how you get this Luckatron Wheel of Power. Which is a nice addition to our team. I, I think of the, the various types of Luckatron Wheel, Power is my least favorite, but it still has its uses. In fact, maybe I'll consider using it for the, uh, the final fight against, uh, well, what's coming. No spoilers. So, um, yeah, again, you, you may have noticed that there were some enemies defeated over here, even though I hadn't attacked them. That was because the laser sort of, like, passed through this area and killed some trog pinchers. And I forget if I uh, finished mentioning, the trog pinchers are very similar to the rhubarbs, or the rhubabies, excuse me, in the last game. Uh, all you have to do here is move this lever at least once so that this gear isn't constantly turning, because that's the thing that will interrupt the laser of the, uh, the first thing we were looking at and keep you from collecting the gizmo. I'm just gonna keep calling it the, like, gizmo. There's no real, like, official name for it. I guess it's like an Archean key sort of thing? But, uh, you can't pick that up while the gear is interrupting this laser that, uh, brings that platform close. Um, so here we will unlock the next door. Some of my greatness must have rubbed off on you because you've done it again! I think this might be the one that has the Crystal Golem. The Crystal Golem is another one that you can sort of just run past if you're speedrunning, but I could use the experience, especially since I'm so close to leveling up. Now, yeah, we've seen the Crystal Golem before. We met him uh, in the uh, uh, in the arena challenges, but also in uh, Drillix's big rig, I think, was the first time you see him in a level. And fighting them is pretty simple. I don't mind these guys even on small platforms because, like, they're engineered in a way that you can actually, like, fight them on even terms on a small platform because like they can do a lot of damage to you up close but if you know the correct strategy then you can play around it if you know what you're doing but like the Archean duelists and some of the other guys are a little bit less predictable and like harder to take down like the Archean shield laser guy I think he's called the juggernaut there we go Yoshi leveled up perfect um I think it's maybe time to switch characters again, just because I've already been through a lot with Yoshi. Let's uh, let's see if Flynn can help us out this this go around. He's also one of our lower Skylanders in terms of experience. It's not a ton of level left, as you might guess, based on the fact that uh, we've hit up all the secret landing platforms already. But I think this next section will lead us into... I think there's actually one achievement for each level. I didn't notice this playing through the game the first time, but I managed to get a bunch of random achievements just sort of playing through the levels. Um, here, we are in the Long Hall. Okay, so in this section, the Long Hall, if you collect all of the speed boosts, then you get an achievement. So there's 16 of them this time, so there's a number of them, but a really good way to stay on path to collecting all of them is just to follow the treasure. Again, I already recommended doing this, but here's a section in particular where if this is of interest to you, you'll want to follow the trail left by the treasure. You don't have to hit every piece of treasure if you just if you want to focus on the, uh, the speed boost, which is what I like to do in this section. 
Um, and it's also okay for you to use the speed boost, as far as I know. There's nothing that seems to indicate otherwise. Um, but, uh, yeah, you, you just need to run into all of them. Oh, got hit by that thing. You want to stay low because we got this going on. Hit that thing, too. Doing a really good job of piloting. I'm a really good pilot, you guys. And there's a bunch of, like, cool things like a health pickup and a score multiplier. But, again, if you're going for this achievement, you want to try and be sure to hit every one of the speed boosts. Uh, which means foregoing those. Uh, let's pick up this one. And there we go. I got all the boosts, which means if I hadn't already achieved the achievement, then I would get credit for it now. So I feel pretty good about that. Luckily, we've got enough missiles to clear this. And I think this is the last section. I, this is a really frustrating hover section, in my opinion, because it's very difficult to dodge all of the attacks coming at you, and they come from basically all sides. Now, it's meant to give you, like, a lot of opportunities to pick up missiles, but I find it just annoying. So, again, I like to stockpile the missiles and just sort of try to blaze through that. Now, if you head left here, not only will you almost run into a giant robot, but there's an extra little stretch of treasure and a bonus multiplier, which is nice. Um, and uh, both of those are things that you can't pick up if you take the, uh, if you take the right path, which will just lead you straight to this platform. So that, that's something to keep in mind if you're trying to power up your Skylanders sort of thing. Didn't have enough missiles to clear both of these, but I don't think that I will actually need to do so. Uh, but maybe I will just to make this a little quicker. There we go. Alright, now even though this is the, uh, the final stop for this level, oh, didn't actually mean for Flint to pick all of that up. Let's actually give some of that to... I think Rush actually still needs some amount of treasure. So he'll pick some of that up, even though he won't be doing much uh, glory hogging in battle today. Yeah, let's switch back to Flint, though, because he could uh, use the power gained by fighting some enemies. It's going to be tricky. The giants are not well suited to fighting the large enemies that we will continue to see for the rest of the level. But uh, we'll see what we can do. Might be able to pull off some new tricks with our uh, rolling dash nonsense. So yeah, we haven't collect all, collected all of the collectibles just yet, but we're pretty close. First, though, we've got some enemies that we will want to take care of. Got like a... Oh, you came from nowhere. Yeah, there's a lot of duelists here. I think there's like four. It's really easy to sort of get, uh, just sort of like ganged up on here. Yeah, luckily like a, a healing item spawned, but I don't know that that's actually going to be enough. Oh, no, I'm going to switch characters now. That went extremely poorly. Um, how's about... Yeah, how about Meta Ridley help finish these guys off with his Light Core Blast? Yeah, these guys are just dreadful. I, I just, I hate so much what they do here by, like... Just, like, look how small this area is, and they drop, like, four or five, like, Archean Duelists on you? It's like, that is not even remotely fair. Their sword attack can hit you from, like, anywhere in this circle. Is there still a dude alive? Why aren't those guys coming in here? They're supposed to jump in here at some point. And I don't think there's any enemies that I can kill. Let me just make sure no one, like, wandered off. That's really weird. I've never seen this before. I, I've encountered so many random glitches playing through this game again. This one's actually really problematic. Because if I can't make them get in here, then I can't actually progress through the level. So I can't attack them. Do I have any Skylander who might be able to attack them? I don't think so. I'm gonna try... See if Pegasus can, like, float around or something. I really don't think this is gonna work. I've got my eye. But these guys are supposed to, to jump in here. It may be because I killed those guys with Light Core instead of an attack, but, like... Feel like the game should be able to account for that? Uh, maybe I can. Oh, okay, I can shoot these guys through the gate with the eyeball. So I don't have to restart the level, which would have made me pretty annoyed. Um, is there more going on? Oh no, maybe I do have to restart the level because apparently that is not registered as me killing the enemies needed to. <laughs> Alright, well, I guess I'll join you back here in a second when I have not glitched the level <laughs> broken. <laughs> Alright, welcome back to the Auto Gyro Adventure, where I've had to replay the entire level to get back here in the hopes that this game won't glitch again. Whew. 
I'm gonna be super upset if it happens again. Not entirely sure how it happened the first time, but that's not my problem now. My problem? Making sure that we complete this level. Now, as you saw before, we got a bunch of duelists. Start small, and then we sort of get ambushed. It's super lame, and uh, just remember whoa, uh, to just keep attacking. It's the main point of these guys. Even with their shield, if you keep attacking, you're gonna take minimal damage. I can't guarantee that you're gonna be completely safe. As you can see, it's really hard to completely avoid their attacks because they have the giantest swords in the world, and, uh, I don't know, this uh, small area sort of tends to lead to some cheap shots. So let's uh, change up characters. Uh, I'm really tempted to switch back to Meta Ridley, but I haven't actually used up his light core explosion since uh, starting this level over. So why don't we switch to Hinata instead? Just to uh, try and ensure that we don't end up with another unwinnable situation. I uh, haven't actually seen that come up in this game. It's a really weird thing. Kind of glad it's on camera, at the very least. If it had simply happened while trying to prepare for the level, it just would have been annoying. Although, happening in the middle of trying to show off the level? Also pretty annoying. Alright, so once those guys are done, as I said before, you're supposed to uh, encounter one of these flamethrower guys. They're supposed to jump in here, and they're supposed to try and take you out. And they're not just supposed to stand there like a bunch of silly pants, which I guess stand in place. Ooh, nice, a conveniently timed level up made quick work of that. Um, Alright, so, now that we've finally been able to defeat all of those monsters in a way that the game is okay with, we can activate this guy. For some reason, we no longer have to put the... Um, nice. Not sure what that is, but it seems like a good thing. I guess we could call that thing like a like a big gizmo. Seven calling this little thing a regular gizmo. Uh, but we no longer have to put the gizmo in the suit of armor doodad. Instead, um, it's just sort of already there and we press the action button to turn it on. Don't know why that suddenly changes at this point in the level, but it does. Anyway, um, as soon as you activate that thing and come through here, head off to the right, and we've got a teleporter. And teleport is going to take us to the final chest, and this teleport is going to take us back, of course. Now, let's see, who could use some treasure? Uh, actually, I think, uh, I think maybe Falco could. I think he's still got... Alright, so, break this open. Uh, also, just as a point of clarification, some of my guys have a little bit of extra experience because I had to play through the level again, so that was a fun... Fantastic time for me. Um, right, so we've got Hinata who's leveled up, and uh, well, I think we can still play with her for a while. I think now all of my characters are at least level 8, which is pretty good. Soon it's going to be time to take on another arena challenge, but I think I'm going to hold off one more level, and that'll be our last, our final preparation before trying to put an end to Chaos's scheme this time around. Now, it's important to note that this. Winged Sapphire's here. We got a little bit of a puzzle here. It's actually kind of complicated. Uh, it's particularly difficult to explain this one because it's just sort of like a maze of blocks you push all over the place. Um, so let's see. I think... I think I want to push that back in place. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, so let's see. If I... Uh, da -da -da -da. Basically, you need to make yourself a path over to the winged sapphire. And you also need to open up a path to... There's a teleporter outside of this maze area, and then there's one right there that's sort of inside. And I think I've set it up so I can open that up. Otherwise, I'm a dope. Well, I may still be a dope, but not for the reasons you would probably assume. Alright. So teleport up here, and I need to push this block back in place, so I guess I am a dope after all. But I think that's the only thing I screwed up. I think everything else is cool. So we teleport on top of this, and we make use of the weird diagonal thing, which I guess isn't a glitch, because you kind of need it to get around uh, this time around. So I use that to get over to the winged sapphire, and there you go. That's the final collectible for the level, which, as you might guess, means we're quite close to the end. Alright, we've collected that, now we can walk back over to this bounce pad and uh, continue our way towards this crystal golem. Get a really close-up view of a bowling pin hat for some reason. Some good camera work there. There's a lot of monster gates in this final area. 
But, uh, yeah, even though we're still keeping up that fine tradition of really small platforms to fight really large enemies, uh, luckily, as I've pointed out, the crystal golems aren't really the worst culprits. Ooh, I sort of got stuck in place here. That's weird. I'm not entirely sure why that's happening. Maybe I can lure him out from that side of this area. I think that'll do the job. Okay, one more crystal, and then we can uh, take care of this guy properly. Let's use our combo move. There we go, that finished him off. This opens another monster gate, and uh, yet again we just sort of press the button. Not entirely sure why this works differently at this stage of the game. Another doohickey? Doohickeyed. I mean, I, I guess it's because these things activate what uh, Flynn so lovingly calls the doohickeys. But, uh, I don't know, it sort of also opens the gates in the way that the other ones were doing earlier. Now, uh, one thing I like to do in this type of situation is, uh, provoke enemies from as far away as possible. I think I've actually tried this in the past, where, like, because you're on, like, a hill, he can't actually hit you. Um, so if you have, like, a sufficient ranged attack, you can take him out without having to get close, which is nice. It's a little trickier to do that with the other one. But unfortunately, the other one also sort of starts off in, like, a, a weird position where you can't get behind him. There we go. So, uh, I guess you can sort of use a ranged attack to, uh, distract him. Oh, oh, almost got me there. Actually, you know what might help? I think Meta Ridley could actually use some experience here. So why don't we use him to finish this fellow off? Let's light core him up, and then a couple blasts from this should take care of him, I think? No? Wow, ah, you're more heavily armored than I remember. He's only taken two damage from each of those hits. Uh-huh, still can't get me. Yeah, it's kind of cheap, but you know what? They're sort of asking for it when they keep backing me into corners and whatnot. Oh, there we go. He got me that time. But he's really got to be almost taken care of. There we go. Just as I expected. Now I get this piece of pizza to uh, recuperate a little bit, recover some health. And I think we're just about there. Oh, let's turn off our thrusters and watch out for this guy's fire. Oh, spoke too soon. I don't know, the problem with these, uh, I think they're the blaze brewers, the flamethrower guys, is that they're... Their flamethrower is annoying because it can get several hits on you very quickly, but their melee attack is even more threatening because it does so much damage. And it happens pretty quickly. So there's really not a great way to fight them. You kind of just have to keep moving and hope that you're not close enough to get hit when the time comes. Ugh, yeah, that could do quite a lot of damage quite quickly. Ah, oh, piece of pizza, just what I needed. Thank you so much, Archean uh, Juggernaut guy. Excellent. Now we've got one more of these to flip, and our third doohickey will complete this puzzle. That's it! The door to Arcus! Let's get moving! These Archeans sure don't like visitors. Let's get moving! This place is coming apart! Now you don't have to worry too much about how long it takes you to get back to the helicopter, but once you're there, you gotta make a beeline to the end of the level. We're gonna need to speed things up to get through this tunnel before it collapses. Alright, so the problem here is that everything is collapsing, obviously. And uh, you don't actually have to boost all the way through this tunnel, even though there's enough boosts that you could do that if you felt like it. Um, the real issue is that there's a door at the end here, and it's gonna give us barely enough time to get through, so we will have to boost we want to get through there safely. Let's do this! Alright, I've never actually had that happen before, so there's a demonstration of why you need to use the boost. I didn't think you needed to start using it quite so early, and I was going to try and show that off this time around. Usually I just boost my way through this entire tunnel. Well, apparently, if you, if you want to play it better safe than sorry, then you might as well just hold down boost and try and hit everything on your way, because if you do that... And I don't say that like me. You'll cut it close, but you won't cut your ship. Sounds like a plan, Flynn. Did some good work there. Well, I do have to say, I think it's really weird that he's our resident pilot, 
and he leaves the controls in our hands for that entire level. Um, yeah, not sure what's up with that, but hey, after a little bit of a snafu beyond my control, we finally completed this level, got all the collectibles, and uh, now we're well on our way towards finding where Chaos is hiding out and putting an end to his Archean Conquertron scheme. Let's uh, see if there's any news from the ship. I'll spare you the details of how awesome and heroic I was getting us through back there. What? You've been talking about it for the last 10 minutes. What's your point? The last time the Archeans were in power, Skylands was nearly destroyed. Now with chaos in control, it's only a matter of time before history repeats itself. We have to find him and stop him. All right, looks like Callie and I are on the same page. We're close, but no cigar. I think it's a nice touch that uh, now that we're in the sort of like Archean tunnels leading up to the city of Arcus, we sort of have like a cave environment and some like stalactites and stuff instead of our normal like clouds and floating islands. That's pretty cool. Uh, one more thing to point out before I sign off today, which is the fact that there's one final thing to find here on the ship. Um, there, you know, there's there's additional uh, canon mini games from the Oracle level in this one, uh, which we haven't showed off. Oh, I thought it was all the way up here, but I guess it's actually in this door is the crane deck. Which is where we'll find another winged sapphire. Terrific. We're very close to having the maximum amount of discount to buy all of our upgrades. And, uh, well, we're starting to get close to having all our upgrades, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, anyway, as I was saying before, uh, there's a couple of extra canon turret minigames. Uh, I didn't play one last time, and uh, I think given all the trouble I've gone through today, I'm just going to leave it where it is, and uh, maybe we can uh, address those at a later date, but they're all pretty straightforward, and you just open one per level, as I sort of stated earlier. I can't really provide a lot of input for them. So I will leave you here. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and I hope you'll join me for the next one where we reach the lost city of Arcus and find out what awaits us there. Hint, probably not a great thing, or a great place to be, but we have to fight our way through here and get revenge for our friend the Machine Ghost, and of course save the Skylands. So, if you're excited about that, join me next time, because we'll be making a lot of progress. See you then! <laughs>